I have friends. <laughs> I'm loving doing that in the beginning. Let me just adjust my camera there for a second. Sorry about that. I don't make, mean to make you dizzy there. I'm just going to try to... Oh, that's a little too far out, isn't it? Let me try to fix that for you. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, that's the beginning, and that's... That's another beautiful page of the Count walking to his castle, his haunted house. So <laughs> I wanted to show you another glimpse of that awesome page. So, okay, in the first video, I showed you how to make the base for our interactive haunted journal. That's the inside, right? And then we fold it up and we're going to make a closure like that, right? And we covered it looks awesome on the inside and then so the outside we're going to cover with that crumbled up um cardstock oh my I couldn't think of my word um so oh I just I love this month you know with Tracy Fox is doing her creep on June starting um June 1st it started and then we are going to work on my awesome, I'm so excited, the awesome Haunted Interactive Journal using Amy's beautiful kit. I showed you in the last video, I took um, 12 by 12 cardstock, 65 pound. I told you how to crush it up and then just smooth it out. The, you know, you can even take your bone folder and get it smoother because once the creases are in there, they're not coming out. So you don't have to worry about that. But you want it to be flat enough for you to work with. So, um, And I don't worry about the tears because it will all get glued down. And, um, you know, we're going to work with this. So now this is going on the outside of the journal. So what I want to do is um, you can uh, glue it like exactly to the edges like this. All the way around and when when there's a, a rip you know you can put glue under there it's not a problem and I think that will be fine but I was also thinking about having it come over to the back ever so slightly so what I'm talking about is gluing it on but doing it this way having just like a scant eighth of an inch like that all the way around and I think I like that idea okay so that's what we're going to start doing is covering the outside of our of our journal so I would tell you to take I think I said about four sheets of this you're going to crumple each sheet up about four or five times um, you're going to get a workout so if you if you have someone in the house that can do that for you, that you don't have to, that would be even better, right? But it's a good way to take out your aggressions <laughs> if you need to do that. Okay, so yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to um, start gluing this on. And then we can always trim the bottom. So I think just a scant quarter inch, or you can just have it like that. But I do like that scant, well, not quarter inch, that scant eighth of an inch showing. Or even a scant eighth. Yeah, I would say that. And then let's just start gluing that all on, and we can trim it when we're done. We can, you know, line it up on one side. So this should go pretty good. So let's let's get started. And um yeah, let's just get started. I am I guess I'm going to use my fabric tack here. Um so use your glue of choice. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start putting glue on. And you can always go back and get your edges down. Because I'd rather have it, I'd rather go back in to get the edges down than have it oozing out. So I'm going to hope that by doing 
what I'm doing here. It's not going to ooze out. So we'll just have to see. We'll have to see if I'm going to be good at that. And it just takes a little while to get this out, but in the end, it'll be worth it. So the glue of your choice. And how's everyone doing? I'm filming this ahead because my grandchildren, my granddaughters are out of school, not my grandsons, of course, they're older, but so I do have the girls here. So when they're here, I'm unable to make any videos. So I'm going to try my best to get these videos done when I can to keep up. So let me get this going here at least up to here okay here we go so i am going to line it up this way so i can get that scant eighth of an inch all the way around the best i can It just takes a little finesse, but I think it, in the end, it's going to be totally worth it. Now, well, I'm already off here. doesn't have to be perfect. Just the best you can do. Obviously, this is a little more. And I've got it on my hand. So I'm going to press this down, and I'm going to turn it over and do this. I just wanted to line it up the best I can. And then once this dries, we'll check the edges. We can always go back. All right, so now I only went up that far, right? So I know I can go farther. So I'm going to just kind of lift this up here and go in more as far as I'm going to go, which is about here. And I will get this all down. So, yeah, it's not so bad. It's just, you know, it, it's a little time consuming. But really, once we get this done, this is going to be awesome, too. And I, I'd like to do a topper because Amy included in the add-on kit um, these great images and figures. So... You, uh, you just have to use them. They are awesome. So, I thought a topper would be good. I don't know yet what kind. I mean, I, I haven't thought of it yet, but I, I thought it would look really good on here. Okay, so let me get that pushed down. so far mm -hmm. loving that okay I don't mind it's actually a sixteenth of an inch maybe but I'm okay with that it doesn't matter to me I actually like it now I see my little edge here coming up so um, I am going to get my little glue bottle here because I can catch I'm catching it with my hand so I'm gonna just get this little glue bottle under here let me cap that up. And then where is my... This is what I'm looking for. I'm going to glue that down. Okay. So yeah, you can feel if you have a little edge. Okay, so let's get back to this here. So I can see... I have a little edge that needs to go down here, not quite to the edge, which is fine. So you can go through here, get that glued. There we go. Oops, got some on there. What's nice about the fabric tack is that you can just rub it right off. Okay, there we go. Like I said, I had a tear there. Let's see, once you glue it down, it's fine. 
Okay, now we have to continue on. So what I'm going to do is get my next piece. I think I'll use the bigger piece and then we'll fill in. Um, I think what I'm going to do is go to this side now, to the other side. Just moving my glue here. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Okay, so we're going to get glue on here. And then I'm going to flip that over, okay? Make sure it's flat. Let me flatten it a little more here. Okay. So now I'm going to put glue here on this side. And then we'll flip it over. See, it's uh, not too bad, right? Pretty easy. Uh, let's see about how far I'm going to go to about here for now. So I need to get this on pretty quick. So far, so good. So I hope, hope you're getting excited. I know sometimes when I watch videos and people are doing this, I have to watch it. I can't just start it right away. I have to watch the videos a few times to get the idea of it and then go back and uh, do the pro actual project. So I totally understand that. Right, because I do the exact same thing. Because you don't want to, you know, waste your products. You want to make sure you understand and get it. And then this way, because since I didn't make a protocol you know, I mean, a proto, not a protocol, a prototype of this. I'm kind of thinking about it and winging it as I go along. Um, you know, maybe if I make a mistake or do something wrong, you won't make the same mistake. You'll learn from mine, and then it'll, it'll go a lot easier for you as long as I make the mistakes, and then you don't have to, right? My hand's getting tired of squeezing this glue bottle. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's try it. So now I'm going to turn this over, grab my piece here. This way, I think I'll try it. And then I'm going to go on. And see how it goes. Sorry if I'm... Let's see. There, that's looking okay. That looks fine. Could be a little... No, it's okay. I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, let's get it on this side. Smooth it out. As my glue's going to drip here. Let me get that on there. Okay. All right. So just smooth it on with your hand. That's looking good so far. Mm -hmm. And we will check our edges after, like I said. So that's fine. I like it. Mm -hmm. And now we just have to do the middle. So I'm going to turn it back over. And make sure these edges are down, at least here where I'm going to overlap. Go in there if I need to. Like that. And then on this side I need to. Like that. You know, it would be good too um, if you want to use like more brown instead of black. If you had a brown tissue, 
paper, um, you could crumple that easily and then cr glue the crumpled tissue paper all over. That would be a good idea as well if you don't have black paper. But usually, you know, use what you have around. That would be good. Okay, so now we have that, those edges down. Yep. We just need to do the middle. And I will, that's more or less the, the, the middle part here. So we're going to overlap slightly. So I'm going to start getting this down here. And I'm going to overlap. And then we'll do our trimming after. Okay, so I think I told you in a, another video that my Halloween party this year, the theme is Beetlejuice. I always like to pick a different theme. Matter of fact, the new Beetlejuice movie is coming out September 6th, 6th, which is perfect timing. Although, you know, the first one is going to be the better one. I, I mean, you know, I never hold out for the second video of a original film. But um, it'll be fun. So I figured that was apropos to have that. But of course, the party will be based on the original movie. So I'm very excited. So I need to make a journal for that. So um, I will probably take you along for the ride on that one as well. Okay, so I'm going to rip this. And I don't know if that's... Well, that would almost work. But let me see. Would I be good to use that? I think I would. Oh, that's cutting me close. Let's see. Let me try another piece here, a little wider piece. I'd hate to stick it down and it was ever so short. The one good thing is it does kind of rip pretty good, well, kind of. <laughs> okay, that looks good. I could just rip a little more off this end here. So let me get that, try to rip it as best I can. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? All right, let's see. This should work. So I am going to go up here, and I can always go back in and get the edges, but let's get this up here and like that. Oh, that looks awesome. I love it. We will go in and fix the edges so you won't really see too much of a seam. Let me see if I could do that right now. Okay. So just do what you can here. And then um, I would tell you to definitely print out your kit. I will show you what I did, how I printed mine. Because I used Amy's. Obviously, I used Amy's Haunted Kit and the Add-on Kit. Um, I also used some of her new Grungy Fall. But if you have some of her other Grungy Kits, you could use those as backing pages. She does give us some backing pages in the new kit. But, um, you, you know, I need more. And I wanted to do more um, different backgrounds, too. So I actually used um, some background for backgrounds of uh, the last year's Creep on June. Oops, I almost dripped on there. Last year's Creep on June um, from Amy, and not from Amy, from uh, Tracy Fox. Um, I used some of her. I, I You know, last year I always said um, those kits are like a staple. I mean, even if you could not buy any more kits, um, if you have like this haunted kit and Tracy's kit maybe um you really you can I I 
inter intermix my kits. Like I've been, you know, making Halloween journals for a few years now. And um, I buy the ones that I know I could use more than once that kind of, to me, are like, you know, you can, they're versatile that you can intermix the pages because they all go together. And I really, really think they do. All right, let's check. Let me check what's going on here. I might have to go back with my fine tip, but I think that looks good. I love it. Okay, looks pretty good. Now we can do some trimming. So I'm going to get my scissors out and just take my time and trim all the way around. This try to do the same doesn't have to be exact. Remember, it's a Halloween journal. Shouldn't be perfect. Should look old, worn, like it's been around in that house for years, hundreds of years, right? Okay. I still haven't thought of a closure, but that that will come on another sleepless night for me. <laughs> another sleepless night when I don't sleep. That That's when the ideas usually come, right? When you don't sleep. Why not, right? Okay, let me turn this and do it from this end. It's a long piece, but, you know, once we get it going, we'll be working with it in sections, so. There we go, let me just trim that little edge off, or rip it off, actually I could, there we go. And then I do want to, and save these pieces, because I'm sure we'll use them for something. Um, I want to trim a little bit off of this edge here, because that got a little long there. Okay, that looks good. Um, and then just a little tiny bit here. And I think we're good to go. I don't want to fold it yet, but we can check the edges um, to make sure that they're all down. So let's just start doing that. Go around gently. And if you feel like you have a little bit of an edge, I would probably go in with a fine tip that you can sneak it in there a little bit. And then glue it down like that. Oops. Okay. And don't worry if you get it there. I'm just taking a dry baby wipe here. I'd rather the edges be glued down. So I'm going to take my time. And so I like that we did the inside and cut and put the edges, raw edges to the front. So look how nice and finished everything is. And if this gets roughed up even more, the edge, the black edge, the more, the better, right? But look at how nice the inside looks. And then once we start adding mm, pockets, ephemera, stuff like that, it's gonna look awesome. So, and we'll grunge it up. We'll just, you know, we what we can do, I'm not sure, but you know what we can do on the inside here is Go around the edges, I think, with black soot, or you can do it with vintage photo or the scorched timber. The scorched timber is dark, so, you know, if you're going to use it, be, be aware of that. Um, but maybe black. Maybe black, so we'll try that. Let's get the edges glued all around first. Make sure they're glued. They're not going to come out. Okay. 
but I'm liking it so far. And see, by adding both of these, this folder, even though it's like a cheaper folder, it's really getting some nice body to it. And once we start adding, building up on this, even with our pockets and ephemera and other things, it's going to be solid. It's going to turn into a really nice solid piece. All right, I'm going to try not to knock the camera here. Getting on this end here. Trying to find where little areas are. Oh, not too many. I did pretty good. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. But you can always go back. Even like the corner here, I can get under there a little more. Okay, and we'll work our way this way. Yeah, I think grunging up the edges with the black soot will be a great idea. So let's, we'll do that. But you don't have to if you don't need, if you don't like that much grunge. You don't have to do that step. Let's try it. I'm willing to do that. I will live with it if I don't like it, but I think it's going to look all right. Even though I like how nice and neat the edges are, I think I think I'm okay to grunge it up. So I don't know if Amy what she's doing with this. She hasn't said. It'll be a nice surprise, I'm sure. Okay, I think I've got all the edges down. I can always check it again. All right, now I have my black soot. I think I don't know. Yeah, I think the black will be best because I do have the scorched timber and that's that I'm sorry about that. That's very dark, but let's let's just start. So either end, it doesn't matter. Ooh, I don't want to fold it yet. I want to, but I don't. <laughs> but it's gonna look so neat. Okay, let's start in a corner here. Oh, and just go lightly. Oops, sorry, you're I'm not in camera, am I? <laughs> oh my gosh. Look at, if you go lightly like this, it kind of cuts that hard edge of the, of the paper. I love it. I'm going lightly. I'm not going crazy with it. But just lightly to soften that rough edge, that harsh edge. I think it's perfect. I love it. And then we're going to let it dry. I'll put it to the side to dry and then I'll show you how I printed some of the pages out so you can get an idea. Yeah, it, it, it does a little something. It really does. I'm liking that. And the black is good because the cover is black. So, I mean, if, you, if you're doing a brown cover, then maybe the vintage, vintage photo or the um, scorched timber would work good for you. And yeah, the important thing is to let dry the glue, let the glue dry over the creases because otherwise your inside won't crease very nice. Believe me, I did, I did it, and because um, you're impatient, you know you want to see what it looks like. So, <laughs> but it's it's important. It doesn't take long to dry either. So, this there was a crease here that I did, and I'm like, oh, not dry enough. Gotta not do it. So. I waited and then it worked out well. So I guess it depends what you uh, pick as far as covering your inside, if you need to do this or not. If you pick something very dark for the inside, you might not need to even do this. But I just, like I said, I just love the traditional orange and black for the cover. I just, 
and the, the digital is very dark as well, so they wanted to do a dark cover. See how the edges look? Don't they look good? Oops, sorry. Moving the camera around. Sorry about that. Okay, so see how the edges look? I love it. I might even go even further and do more. But I just wanted to see how it looked. And I almost think, too, that when I crease it after it dries, and I crease it, I might even... Look at that. I might even crease, uh, do the creases, like fold it out and do the creases. I'm not sure, but it's an idea. I'm just going to the other end here and kind of going around the corner here to give it a little darker corner. Lovely. I love it. It's definitely softened those sharp edges of the inside digital. Okay. I'm going to put this to the side to dry, and then I'm going to bring out my um, printable, the, the prints that I did, okay? And just kind of give you an idea of what I printed. Um, let's see here. Okay. Where are I looking for? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, give me one second. I'm going to move this over, and I'm going to move these in. Now, I still haven't picked everything out, but like I said, I'm not sure if we're going to do one journal on one side and do something else on the other, or we can put double signatures, one on each side. So those are our options. So I'm going to sit now and just run through what I printed so you have an idea of what I did. So this page here... And no, I, th these two pages here, where is my count? There he is. I, when you fold these in a signature, you're going to kind of lose him and the angel. Because the sign, once you fold it, the crease will go right down the middle. So if I do make two signatures, these will be the center. So when you open the signature up you will see the whole view of this okay these two things um also if if you want to make another signature if you're making three signatures you might want to use the house as uh, and there's another house one too you might want to use the house as the center signature right we usually do stuff like that when you want to see the whole picture but um, if I do make two signatures, these would be the ones in the center of the signatures, right? And on the back, these are some of her, uh, Amy's, um, this, I think these are part of the kit. I'm going to try to remember, like the one that we used on the inside of the journal cover, that's from the Grungy Fall these are from the Haunted add-on, I believe, yes. So those would be my centers. Um, then we have the Haunted House, one of them, and then I put one of those on the back. This I love all the pages, all the different room scenes, but I think this one is my favorite. Oh, if I have to pick a favorite, it's hard because I love them all. But this one with the mirror and the candles and the pumpkins and the staircase. Oh, my gosh. I love this page so much. So that one I printed. I love the moon. I love anything about the moon. So this is a very spooky, eerie scene. I love this. So did that on there. Um... Then here's another beautiful page. I love them all. I printed, I have um, some digitals that are like, probably were hand dyed at, and she made it, whoever this, I'd have to look and uh, see where this came from because I've had it a long time. But they're all pages like this. So these are good backing pages. So I did that there. Then this room page here is very good. And um now this printed with a white border, but I, I don't think it's a problem because 
I might make a pocket out of this so I'm not worried. And then if I do use it as a regular page, I could just ink the, the two pieces there, the white border. So I'm not worried about that. Um, this, this red page is hmm, from a, another kit. I think it might have been a Tina Shabby Dabby Dude Up, one of her kits. I think this backing page here. This is awesome. I love this page as well. The dark doorway. Uh, let's see, what did I put on the back? Okay, this was um, from Tracy's last year's Creep on June kit. It's a staple page, I believe. This is awesome, too. I love it with the fireplace. And this was from Tracy's Creep on June last year. Here's my favorite scene. That's another one from Tracy's last year kit. And then there's that red again. And somehow I got it to print. I, you know, who knows how it prints the way it does. I love this page with the spider in the window. I love it. Love it. And there's another part, one of those pages. Um, this one. I love the broken windows. Another one of those pages. This one with the piano here. Now this this one here is from Tracy's new Creep on June kit. Because she gave some background pages. So I love that. I thought that looked really well too. Here's the other haunted house. I love this page here with the candles leading up. And then you see the cemetery around it. Love that. And that. Uh, is a wallpaper piece from Tracy's new kit. Here's another awesome outside view with the cemetery and the full moon and bats flying from Amy. And then this page here is from Tracy's new kit too. So see how you can intermingle the kits when they have the same kind of colors and elements. And um, love this. I love with the orange and the black. And this is also from Tracy's new kit. So to make some other pages to go in, I did some of my own, uh, well, what you would call dyeing or smooching, and I can walk you through that. And I'm sorry for shaking the camera there, so let me move this out of the way. This is just my 28-pound uh, pay copy paper. That's what I usually always use. And what I did was... On this old placemat here, you can see it's kind of messed up. I took um, a little bottle of water, spray water, and then I took either my scorched timber. And what I did was I rubbed it all over this placemat. So these placemats I get from the Dollar Tree. So I, ha I buy like five of them, and then I just use them as protectors for my table to work on and they're great for doing this kind of technique so I rub this all over here and I think you've seen everybody does it and then I spritz water make it nice and wet and then what I did was I just started smushing the paper all over it checking it out smushing smushing one side trying to cover up as much as the white as I can but you don't have to cover it all up as you can see and then when I got enough on this side, I rubbed it on again, sprayed more water, and then turned it over and started doing the other side. And to hurry it up so I could move on to another sheet, I left it on here and I had my little dryer, you know, my little handheld dryer, and I dried it. And because it's not super soaked with water, it dried to a damp touch really fast where I was able to take this and lay it on the floor by me and start over and do another page. So these pages here are the scorched timber pages, which actually kind of look almost like coffee dyed or tea dyed. I could have went, you can go darker and you could, I could go now take these dry ones and do layers again, but I think I'm okay with what they look like. And then I did the same exact thing with black soot so this is black soot and so I mean if you don't have coffee dyed paper tea dyed paper 
and but you have a couple of your ink pads even if you're not using black if you have purple orange or whatever colors um, you can do this technique and it's so easy and make your own hand dyed papers to go in your journals so and it's pretty cheap I, when I always uh, buy a new color, I buy the reinker as well at the same time. So then you can always, you know, continue adding your ink. So that's a good tip when you buy an ink pad, buy the reinker of the same color together right away. I learned that the hard way. So these are the pages for the signatures. And I have to decide. And I might look for some more, like just some normal, I don't know, maybe some, I have like a, a novel, a spooky novel. I might put some of those pages in there because if you do see the words, it's a spooky novel. So I know it'll fit in. Um, you can put your vintage papers in your, your whatever, you know, your graph papers, oh, music paper, you know, because you you know, the creepy organ plays and all that. So I'll, I'm probably going to add some more pages in here. Um, if you have scrapbook papers, you know, uh, spooky scrapbook papers or uh, anything like that, think of putting those in too. These are half inch spines for the, the signatures. So I probably, because, and then we're going to put ephemera on some of them. So we don't want to make it too fat, too thick of a signature because we only gave it a half inch. So I'm going to say, um, I don't know, maybe no more than, uh, well, let's see, even 15. I don't know. We'll have to decide, but at least, I think you're good with at least 10 pages, which gives you 40 sides. Um, but we might be able to add a few more. Like, I don't know if we should go more than 15 pages which will give you 60 sides. I mean, I think that would be more than enough. So, but we'll see. Once I get all the papers together, we'll fold them and put the signature together. And then I'll have to like say, decide, am I putting two signatures, one on each side? Um, or are we just going to do one signature on one side and do something else on the other? So I'm going to think about that and get back to you at the next video on that. Okay. So, um, yeah, the cover is looking really good. I love that I inked the edges. Um, I don't know if I'll ink the creases once this dries and I'm able to recrease the creases again. I might. Um, it might look good, so I'm thinking about it. But the cover looks awesome. And like I said, I can go. I'm going to go back and glue these back down again to make sure they're down. But really, with this piece added here. Um, it's not going to make a difference to see any of that because we're going to put a topper on and, uh, you know, we'll sew the signatures in, the smaller seams, um, whatever we're going to come up with. Like I said, we're doing this on the whim. I don't have this planned out. I'm just thinking ahead. So I will see you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this and um, let's get our creep on. See you later, friends. Bye.